everybody, welcome to Carbon's DIY Garage. This morning I am going to be replacing a two and a half inch spacer lift that I put on this Jeep back in early 2012 with a brand new two and a half inch uh, suspension lift, no spacers involved from Terraflex. And if you're a movie fan out there and you think you know where this prop came from, drop it in the comments. I'd like to see what you guys come up with. Uh, it wasn't actually in the movie, it was a, a prop used in filming and then replaced with CGI later. Maybe that's a help for you. All right, I've got the Jeep up on jack stands and as the wheels are off here in the rear, you need to do the rear first for reasons I'll explain in a second. Um, I've got it on jack stands on the frame, obviously not on the axle, and that's as high as my two and a half ton jack can get this up in the air. Hopefully it'll be high enough so that this can droop down far enough I can get the springs out, but if not, uh, I have to probably jack it up some more with some blocks of wood. You'll also notice that I have the rear differential up uh, being held up by the jack. That's putting the axle more at normal ride height. Uh, that way I could go ahead and take the tires off, and then the suspension should pretty much be as if it were sitting on the ground, which means hopefully none of it's binding up. But you will need the jack here, and you'll lift and lower the differential uh, to get those bolts to unbind, especially probably when we're removing the track bar. But um, enough yammering for me, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna go do is loosen all eight of the rear control arm bolts, and later I'll end up removing one of them, like I said before. All right, I've got those eight uh, control arm bolts loose. Now I'm gonna go ahead, since I'm in the spirit of loosening things, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen the two track bar bolts and uh, make sure that those will be able to come free easily. So I don't know if I made it clear up front, but I'm doing everything on both sides at once. So all eight control arms, um, the track bar bracket on both sides. But then the next thing we have to do is kind of get everything off that'll prevent the axle from drooping to uh, full extension. And so that includes the brake line bracket and also the ABS wire and where it's attached to the wheel. And that way you don't uh, interfere with the drooping. You also need to remove the rear sway bar links and you're gonna keep those and move them up to the front. And of course you need to take the shocks off. So I'm gonna start with taking the shocks off. All right, so looking up at the top of the shock, uh, your look might be a little bit different because you can see that I've got extensions on the shock mount that if you're stocked, you don't have those. Uh, that also means that those bolts are longer for me, so I had to go out and buy some new shorter factory length bolts because I'm using uh, longer shocks. So I'll put information about that in the video description. Uh, you can also tell these red shocks, these are Rubicon shocks, and they're actually maybe the third set of shocks I've put on this. All of it being Rubicon takeoffs, none of them bought brand new. So this will be the first suspension I've actually bought brand new for this Jeep. And then for the lower shock mount, it's just a 18 millimeter nut and bolt. Probably goes without saying, but you want to save all your hardware because you're going to use it to put the lift back on with. Next, we'll go ahead and take the rear sway bar links off. Uh, one bolt up here and one bolt down here, and uh, they should come right off. Make sure you take a look at the direction these are installed so you can remember how to do it later. Basically, the threads are sticking towards the drum and the, the bolt heads are inside towards the uh, differential. I was fighting a little bit with the top uh, bolt on this sway bar disconnect or the sway bar link, and that's because I didn't have the axle high enough so that um, the sway bar and the link were stress-free. You can see that uh, naturally, there's quite a big difference there. So I really ought to have adjusted the axle so that it wasn't bound up and it would have come out much, much easier. Uh, lesson on me, even though I knew this, I guess I didn't know what to be looking for. So heads up on that. Um, anytime you experience that with any of these connections, think about how you can change the geometry so you don't get uh, stuck like I was and you don't break anything. Uh, whoever installed this thing did a number on the sleeve. Uh, you can see on the inside there, threads into the sleeve. And then the nut is actually crushed through the rubber bushing onto the sleeve as well. So I don't know who did this, but uh, they definitely need to be more careful next time. Oh, oh wait, that was me 10 years ago. Whoops. With the sway bar links disconnected, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bracket, which is for stock. It'll be this 10 millimeter bolt that holds your brake lines up against the frame. I've already got that lift installed, so I actually have an extension here already, but I'm still gonna remove it, uh, 10 millimeter bolt, 
and this will give me lots of droop uh, for that axle. Uh, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and replace this bracket with what comes with the TerraFlex kit. And then if you follow your ABS line, which is right here by the muffler, follow that down to the back of the brakes. Now we're upside down. You can see that the, uh, the wheel speed sensor line is what that is. It's held in place with two clips. And so you just need to remove those like that, get both of them. And then uh, you've got lots of droop for that sensor as well. Over here on the passenger side is the vent tube for the axle, and it's just uh, held on by a barb fitting. So it's just a twist, wiggle, and pull, and that is loose. And all that's left for me now is to pull off the rear track bar. Like I said, uh, because I already have that extension bracket on the other side, you've got to pull both sides off, but if you're just installing this on your factory no-lift Jeep, then you really only need to take off the driver's side because that's where the bracket is going to go from the Terra, TerraFlex lift tube. I guess if you take all the bolts out, the track bar is just going to drop out if you get the uh, suspension angles right, so, oops. Next you can remove the um, bracket here that holds up the emergency brake or parking brake lines, and it's just a uh, two 10 millimeter nuts. So it's a little zoomed out view, so it's just to the left of the gas tank, um, just these two nuts, and now it's uh, dangling free and you've got lots of room for drooping the axle. Now that all of the stuff is out of the way, we should be able to just lower the axle and the springs probably will just fall out. Um, but we're going to go real slow here and um, make sure that nothing binds up or gets pulled tight uh, or, or breaks anything. So like brake lines, um, emergency brake lines, all that good stuff. If you have a stock Jeep, this rubber spring isolator might come out with the spring. Uh, mine stayed stuck up there. That's because it's also up into that spring spacer that I've got to take out. There's a bolt up there in the middle holding it in place, so I need to remove those on both sides. These are the rear bump stop extensions, and they just simply go on top of the shelf here on the uh, axle, just like that. So the little, the little nose here points towards the front, and uh, you just drop provided bolt and washer. Uh, one in the front, one in the back. Drop it in like that, uh, washer and nut on the bottom, and just uh, tighten it up. Access is pretty tight in here, so definitely don't tighten these down until you have both of them started. So next I'm going to install this rear track bar bracket that sits on top of the axle, and uh, just goes on like this over the track bar bracket on the, on the axle itself, something like that. And then there's a U-bolt that goes over here. And then, like I said, the um, lower control arm bolt goes into back into its hole in the axle bracket here, and it'll hold that track bar bracket in place. So the bracket comes with the sleeve that needs to go up into the, um, fr the bracket here on the axle to keep the, uh, the axle bracket from crushing when you uh, install the bolt. All right, for those other YouTube videos out there that show you how to install this track bar bracket and it just all goes together, I don't know what magic fairy dust they're using, but uh, getting this lower control arm back uh, to line up with everything was not an easy chore. What I ended up doing is I took the bolt here out of the bracket to give more flexibility to orient the bracket around this bolt. And then I also jacked this up um, you can see there's not much room left between the upper and lower bump stops. It's up pretty high, but that finally got the control arm where it could actually line up with the holes. And then I got the bolt, st bolt started and I could just tap on it with a hammer to get it all the way through. But um, it took me about a half hour to find the right configuration to be able to get that bolt in. So uh, it's not, at least for me, it was not a two minute chore. Uh, but now I'll go ahead and put this bolt back in and uh, get these bolts tighten down I will tighten I will not tighten the lower control arm bolt but I will tighten this one to 75 foot pounds and tighten both of these to 85 foot pounds per the instructions um, doing it um, you know a little bit at a time so everything's loaded evenly 
just a final post torquing update. I did torque this to 75 foot pounds, but these, um, I'm really worried that anything more than 45 and it's just pulling the, the frame with a bracket um, backwards. And I'm worried about putting too much torque into it and it's stripping the bolts or, or the frame or breaking something. So I'm gonna leave it at 45 foot pounds. I think that'll be sufficient. Um, the torque spec for TerraFlex is 85 foot pounds. I'm just nervous about putting that much into it. Uh, totally up to you, just telling you what I'm doing. Next up, we're gonna install our new springs. So you take the spring isolator that was on your install, the, your factory piece, put it on the top of the spring. Big end of the spring goes up and little end just sits on the perch. And there you go. And I have lots of droop, so I have lots of room. Um, and it's just gonna sit there until I go and put the uh, little keeper that goes down here to hold the spring in place. With both the springs in place, I'll go ahead and we'll slowly raise up the axle to get the springs to engage with the upper perch and make sure it's all lined up. So now to install the retainer for the rear springs, it's a um, bolt, lock washer, massive washer, this nut that slips into this little tool that they give you. And uh, it's really a two part effort. So the washer and the bolts go in through the top and then on the front side, so towards the front of the Jeep, there's a gap where you can slip this in. So this is the front, the forward facing, the engine side of the rear axle. You can see the little gap there from the, uh, this is the parking brake wire. But that's where you slide your tool with the um, nut. Right up in there like that. And then from the top side, you put the uh, bolt with the washer through and uh, thread it in, get it started, and then tighten it up. Next up, I'm gonna install the rear sway bar links that came with the kit. And uh, thankfully, I don't have to reuse the bolt that I had up on top on the sway bar itself because uh, these new sway bar links come with an uh, integrated bolt and the ball joint. And uh, this one, if it starts to spin on you, you just take an Allen key, stick it in the end uh, here as you tighten the nut down. And then once you get a good tension on the nut, um, it shouldn't uh, spin the ball joint anymore. And you can go ahead and torque it up. The uh, factory spec for this top torque is 66 foot pounds and then reusing the bolt in the bottom the spec there is 75 foot pounds and you want to have the bolt head on the inside of the um, axle bracket but the sway bar link itself goes on the outside of the bracket and also on the outside of the sway bar and you do that on both sides next up are the shocks and you can leave one of the bolts up there and just slip the uh, bow tie over the bolt and then that'll help hold it in place and then you can put the other bolt in on the other side um, and then snug it up to start with and before you torque everything down just get the whole shock installed i'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down and get this in place uh don't want to drop it on my face try and do this all one-handed with the shock uh not not tight but uh mounted up there i can next i'll cut the line here the shock will extend and i will try to time it just right to get the bolt into the shock um, without having to leverage it back up. But I probably have to get a screwdriver and push it back up because I'm never that lucky. Huh. Well, or you have the axle extended already beyond um, full travel of the shock. And so you just uh, scoot the axle up and get it connected. These get torqued to 56 foot-pounds and the upper bolts get torqued to 37 foot-pounds. So I'll torque this bottom one and then go take care of the top one, or the top two, I guess. I took the rear track bar. I was just gonna install it right there because um, that would be just super easy. It'll just slide right in, get that um, connected but not torqued. And then I reconnected the vent line for the axle. And then I reconnected the parking brake um, cable retainer thing up there and then on both sides I reconnected the speed sensor cabling that uh, uses little Christmas trees here on the back side of the, um, the axle frame here and then I thought well what the heck may as well go try to put the track bar in and I honestly only had to raise the 
axle up just a little bit and the holes lined up. There's two holes here. Use the top hole uh, for the two and a half inch lift that uh, we're installing. And uh, it all went back together. And so I've got it tightened. The uh, only thing, let me see if I can show you. The nut is actually pretty close to the coil for the spring. So you're definitely gonna need an open-ended wrench versus a socket to uh, tighten this down. But I've got the track bar in. I thought that would be a lot more difficult than it was. So everything is now reconnected. So really the next and last step is to put the tires on, put this down on the ground, and then go torque all of the suspension parts. So all eight control arm uh, bolts and the two track bar bolts. Um, everything else is already torqued, so the rear um, track bar relocation bracket, that's already torqued in place. The shocks are torqued and the uh, sway bar links are torqued. So it's just those suspension bolts and I think 125 foot pounds for all the control arms and I'll have to double check on the rest. Ah, I knew I would forget something before I go put the tires on. The brake line relocation brackets, uh, I did take my old ones off, came with that old uh, cobbled together lift. This is the one that Terraflex sent. Use, reuse the 10 millimeter bolt. They uh, have a little kit that's got uh, a bolt, a nut on the back side, two washers. Uh, real simple, you just put these things together, the bracket and your brake line, and boom. Nice brake line relocation bracket. Do that on both sides. Then you can put the tires on, get this thing on the ground, torque it all up. All right, we're up front. It's basically the same idea. We're gonna take a bunch of stuff off, put our new suspension in, put that stuff back on. Um, we're going to do it here on the passenger side. You'll repeat it on the driver's side as well. The passenger side is a little bit more challenging because the track bar uh, bracket and everything is also right here. So you have to deal with that when you're getting the spring in and out. But uh, basically the same idea. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the shock. If you've never taken your shocks off before, it's a 17 millimeter nut on the top and you need to use a flat wrench. You're not going to be able to get a socket up here. A uh, ratcheting box wrench is ideal uh, if you have one or if you need an excuse to go get one. And if the shock body turns while you're loosening it, the shock actually has flats on it, at least the factory ones do, so you can stick a wrench on the flats on the top of the shock body and hold it in place. And it's a 16 millimeter to hold the shock body. So you can see there at the end, um, it is actually spinning the shaft of the piston and not the shock body. So luckily I had enough of a gap in there. I could get some vice grips in to just hold that piston in place. The bolt was actually loose, uh, or the nut was actually loose. So I could get it off by hand once I stopped that piston from spinning. But uh, So just be aware of that. Hopefully you don't have um, any issues with that. Uh, we'll have to see how the other side goes. But these shocks are pretty old, so it doesn't really surprise me. So here's a quick tip on how you can navigate through that. So then you just take the, uh, the hardware off the top of the shock and then just let it sit there and uh, work on the bottom. So as you can see, I have the shock extension bracket on mine. Uh, if you're doing this from stock, you wouldn't have this. You would just pull out an 18 millimeter uh, wrench on both sides, pull out the bolt that's holding the shock to the bracket. And then uh, just be careful, the shock will be free and you don't want it to drop on you, but uh, then you can just pull the shock down. I should mention before I go too much further that up here in the front, I did the same as in the back. I loosened the torque on all eight bolts for the control arms. Um, and then I also have a jack supporting the pumpkin. So it's at uh, basically normal ride height. If you don't do that, uh, when you release those shocks, then uh, the, the control arms are gonna pull the whole thing down and uh, you don't want that surprise and you don't wanna break any uh, of your brake lines or anything like that. So speaking of brake lines, now we can go ahead and release the brake lines from here on the frame. And also you can release the uh, wheel speed sensor um, wiring. You can just pull it out of those clips right here all the way down to give it some, uh, some freedom to droop. So the TerraFlex kit does not come with brake line extensions for the front. Um, since I've already got a lift on here previously, I created my own with this T-shaped piece of steel uh, just to get the brake line bracket a little couple inches above the place where it normally mounts. Um, I don't really want to remove it and I don't think I need to um, and still get the droop that I need. But if you've got the stock set up, you definitely want to remove this uh, bolt, probably a 10 millimeter, and free up your brake line. 
Um, so that way there's, there's nothing going to get hung up. And when I lower the, uh, the axle, I'll of course keep an eye on it. And uh, if it looks like it's going to cause a problem, I'll take it apart. Next up, we're going to remove the sway bar links and mine are aftermarket. They're JKS quicker disconnects. So they just need to pull these two pins and uh, pull the, the sway bar link off. Uh, no bolts or anything required. If you still have the stock ones, you're going to have to use, I think it's an 18 millimeter. And the, um, if I remember right, the, the ball joint in there might spin, so you might need an Allen key to hold it in place. I don't exactly remember, but it should be pretty easy. So I don't have enough droop here on the passenger side to uh, be able to get the spring out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the passenger side track bar bolt completely, get the track bar out of here, and then that should let it come down the rest of the way that I need. With the sway bar links disconnected, the shocks out, um, and the brake line's free, I should be able to just lower the axle and uh, get some droop in this and be able to pull the springs out. So I did end up pulling the brake line extension bracket that I had made apart into the two pieces, the frame and that T-shaped piece of sheet metal because on the driver's side, it was starting to pull on the brake line. So with respect to getting the springs out, getting the passenger side out with removing the track bar, I could droop it down far enough, that spring came out no problem. What you then need to do for the driver's side is bring your jack over to the passenger side control arm, lift the passenger side up uh, pretty much up to the bump stop, and then you'll get the driver's side to tilt down far enough where that spring will come right out. You don't have to fight with the drive shaft or anything else, just lift the passenger side up and the driver's side will come right out. So next we're going to install the TerraFlex bump stop extensions. And the first thing you need to do is remove the factory bump stock because you're going to put the extension in here and then the factory stock uh, into the extension. And you do that with just like a screwdriver or something to pry it out and it comes out pretty easily. If your springs were like mine, the rubber isolator came off with the spring. You need to put the isolator back up here first before you put that bump stop extension on because the isolator will not fit over the bump stop extension. Um, don't ask me how I know this, and I also know that it's a real pain to get the TerraFlex bump stop extension out after you install it. So put your isolator on first. If you're Superman, you can put the bump stop extension in just by hand. Everybody else needs to use a jack. So put your jack underneath the passenger side control arm or the driver side control arm, a couple blocks of wood and then you can press the uh, bump stop extension into place pretty easily and you know it's in when you actually start lifting up the jeep instead of lifting up the, the bump stop and you'll see it kind of snap into place and you should be able to twist it um, easily when you've got it installed. And you really have to hold that bump stop in place so it goes in straight. If it doesn't go in straight, it'll just come right back out. So um, one hand on the jack, one hand on the bump stop to hold it going in straight. And uh, you'll feel it kind of just pop right in. So once you've got the bump stop and bump stop extension installed, your isolator is up on the uh, frame. Just go ahead and uh, make sure that you're at full droop on both on whatever side you're working on. Go ahead and insert the spring. The smaller diameter goes at the top, the larger diameter goes at the bottom. Um, the isolator at the top has a cutout for the top of the spring, so you make sure you get that lined up. And then the cup at the bottom on the axle has a cutout for the bottom of the spring as well, so make sure that that is lined up as well. Uh, do that on both sides, and um, that's really all there is to it for getting the springs installed. When we go to put the shocks in, you will um, also get two washers, two bushings, and a nut. And just to show you up close, these bushings have a larger extrusion and a smaller extrusion. The smaller one goes up against the washer and the larger extrusion goes between the brackets and that'll fit right into the hole uh, in the bracket. So make sure you install it this way and don't get them upside down. With the axle fully drooped, we'll go ahead and install the shocks right now. Start by installing at the top and then uh, you'll jack up the bottom of the axle to uh, get the bolt hole to align for the uh, bottom shock bolt. When you're raising the axle, you also want to keep looking at your springs and make sure they're twisted still so that the uh, top and bottom are in the pockets of the rubber isolator and uh, the lower frame bracket. The torque 
Once you get it all done, the torque at the top is 20 foot-pounds and the torque at the bottom is 56 foot-pounds. There's really no way to measure the torque. 20 foot-pounds at the top, really you just want to see when those bushings start to bulge a little bit, then that's good, that's where you want to be. And then you can do 56 foot-pounds there at the bottom bolt. Next up is to reinstall the brake lines. And uh, if you've got a brake line extension that you built yourself, make sure you put that back together. Otherwise, the factory frame uh, mounted ex uh, bracket will go in place and then you just uh, connect the other one to the side of the fender. With the shocks and springs installed, the brake line uh, back in place, uh, the only thing left to do is reinstall the bolt for the track bar and reconnect the sway bar links and then retorque all the control arm uh, bolts. It's a lot easier to put the tires on and set this thing on the ground. And you can see that the track bar is uh, nearly in the hole, uh, they're, they're nearly lined up. So what I need to do now is just get in the Jeep and steer a little bit. And that will, since the tires aren't going anywhere, that'll actually shift the, uh, the frame over a little bit and it should line up those holes. Might have to play with it for just a little bit, but uh, it's easier to do that than try to mess with ratchet straps. Okay, go ahead. Go the other way. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, stop right there and hold it. Thanks. That's it. Yep. Alright, all the control arms are torqued and the track bar. The track bar is torqued to 125 foot pounds. The lower control arms are 125 foot pounds at all four of those bolts. And the upper control arms are torqued to 75 foot pounds at all four of those bolts. The only thing left is to install those sway bar links. And with my JKS quicker disconnects, that's a pretty simple process here with the Jeep on the ground. Um, if you've got to reinstall the, uh, the rear sway bar links that you brought up from the rear to the front using the bolts, uh, it's really just a matter of uh, moving the sway bar around and you might need some help um, lifting up on the bumper to, uh, to get the geometry right to get both of those uh, sway bar links installed. But they're actually pretty easy to install. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, slide mine on and then that'll be the last part of uh, this installation. that is it for this installation video guys two and a half inch TerraFlex suspension lift with uh, shocks and everything pretty simple to install but it did take me a good amount of time maybe 10 hours total that includes uh, time it took me to do the video uh, do the front and the back and everything else really happy with the way it turned out with uh, the old movie prop this is the black mark I was talking about in the beginning it didn't really change a whole lot and in fact the rear end stayed about the same height but the front end did come up about seven eighths of an inch some people in other videos have commented about pinion angles. I measured mine before and after. Eight, eight degrees in the back, two degrees in the front. It did not change at all when I replaced the lift. If you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comments section. The video description has torques and parts and tools and all that good stuff. And if you uh, like the channel and want to support it, please give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And of course, financially, you can hit super thanks or buymeacoffee.com. But until the next video, there's lots more projects to come. You guys take care, and we'll see you next time.